Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back. So today I'm going to talk to you about how you can get cleaner data in Power BI within Power Query. So we're talking specifically about data preview tools. So I'm going to show you how to navigate through every single option within data preview and how you can achieve clean data from the top down. Stay tuned. All right, so before we start, what I want to talk about is cleaning data, right? So there's numerous ways to do it. There's honestly like a thousand ways to do it. But the way I do it personally is everything within Power BI directly. Now the most efficient way is probably going to be in the source data itself. If you can do that or outside of Power BI, just because Power BI is probably not the most efficient when it comes to processing the amount of data that you may have. Now, if you have a small set of data where it's like imported files, then you may be better off just doing it directly in Power BI. Whereas if you have a large database that you're kind of bringing into Power BI, it might be beneficial just to kind of filter your data and then do some cleaning and transformations within that database kind of before you imported it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on view here. And then we're going to see data preview up top, right? So we're going to see all of our options up here. The first ones I'm going to talk about is column quality. Then we'll go to the right-hand side and kind of talk about these two before we finish up with these two up top, which is model spaced and show white space. But the first thing I want to talk about, once again, is going to be column quality. So if I check this box, right, it's going to now give me a blown up version of what's on the bar. So specifically talking about return date is it's going to show me what's valid. So how many cells are actually full, right? It's going to show me how many are in error status. So if there's any mismatching value types, for instance, if I have text values as well, it might show up as an error just because there's some sort of mismatch and then empty as well. So empty is going to read all my null values that are listed here. And nulls are necessarily going to always hurt you. Uh, for this instance, it really won't. But what we have here is showing 54% of rows within this column itself are going to be empty, right? So it's just analyzing this entire column as a whole. Now, when you're in Power Query, it's always going to show you this preview, this analysis based upon the first thousand rows. Now, if I deselect this, I can also see the preview up here on the bar itself. That's going to be your column quality preview. And you can also see a version of that preview if you just hover over it and it'll pop up and tell you, you know, your percentages that we just saw as well. Now, the benefit you're going to have when looking at column quality is going to be the data types, right? So say, for example, you know, something was miscategorized. So if I want to actually convert this to a date, which I need to do. So if I click here on the top left and then I click on date, it's automatically going to give me an error, right? So now if I click on column quality again, this could show me I have a 45% error rate and then the rest are actually null, but it's not reading them because there's a whole mismatch really across the whole column. So what I don't want to do is what I just did here. So I'm going to delete that step and I'm going to change it to text first. So this is just a quick cheat code as well. If you want to convert a date that's listed as a whole number format, you want to change it to a text first and then a actual date format. Okay. And then once we have this pop up, we're going to add a new step just so I can see every individual step, right? And then now we have our dates. Okay. Now let's just say for instance, right, another helpful use case of this is going to be if we're looking at an employee ID, for instance, right? So we want to make sure that everything across the board is valid. Every single data point is present within this column. Because if something is not present, that's only going to hinder our relationship. So if we're building a one-to-many relationship, right, we want to have that one, that unique primary key that we're looking at for employee IDs to flow and read the many table that we kind of have that's feeding the foreign keys, the foreign values that we're kind of bringing in, right? This is another way you can look at this data and identify, hey, do I have any missing key data points within my data set here? If you do, you probably want to go back to your source data 
and kind of see what's wrong. Or you can just merge tables and kind of bring data points together so you can have that one distinct row that you're looking for. So that's really my first step when it comes to data cleaning, right? Is I ensure that all my column types are correct. And then I go into column quality and just to make sure everything is correct as well and everything's valid. Now there's some columns where it's just not going to really matter and you can just move on from those. But the primary ones that you're looking at, you really want to have those data points in there. And then you don't necessarily have to click on this too often because if you see a full green bar, you know you're in a good place too. The next one we're going to look at is column distribution. Okay, so column distribution is going to be another helpful tool when it comes to identifying, hey, do you have unique and distinct keys within your column? So unique and distinct have their own definition in Power BI. So distinct is going to be, okay, how many different values do you have within your data set? Now it's obviously previewing the first 1,000 like we talked about, right? So based upon the first 1,000 rows of data within this column itself, so it's telling me there's 1,000 distinct rows, meaning 1,000 employee IDs are listed within this column. Now, they can be listed more than once, and another way to check if they are is to now look at the unique. Out of the 1,000 distinct, how many are actually listed only one time. That's where unique comes in, right? Depending on the value that's listed next to unique, that's going to tell me how many values are listed only one single time. So if I have a perfect match here for distinct and unique, I know off the bat that my data is solid, right? So we're in a good place there. And I want to look at all those primary keys that I'm using across my data set for this, just to ensure and to validate though. So as I continue transforming my data and I start going into the model view and building relationships, I know I'm in a good place. I'm not going to run into any sort of issues before I dive into visualizing my data. Now you can also see other columns such as gender. You know, you got two genders and then, you know, you have male and female. So you have two distinct distinct, we have zero unique, right? So we have zero unique here because male and female are listed more than one time, right? So if they're listed only one time, you know, for each one, then you're going to have that unique value, that numeration kind of listed here. All right. So the next one we have is column profile. So it's going to really take column quality and then column distribution as well, and then kind of merge them into one in a way, but not fully, right? So once you click on it, this is kind of what pops up, right? So you have value distribution really across the board on the right-hand side, right? So we're gonna click on another column as well so you can see a little bit different view. The value distribution is essentially gonna show me, okay, how many times is a value repeated? So now you can see based upon the frequency, how many times is a value repeated so you can identify quickly off the bat without doing any visualization analysis on the front end. This value here is the most common, the most utilized within this data set. It's going to show you a preview of the count. So how many rows of data are we looking at? If you have less than a thousand, it's going to show you that solid amount. How many errors, how many are empty, distinct, unique. I'm actually going to click on the return date now, just so you can see a little bit of a different view. So now you can see the value distribution is based upon, you know, the frequency of how often a date actually is used. So if I'm looking at September 9th, 2024, I can see that this value is used 20 times. Now, if you hover over, it's actually going to tell you that value that's used 20 times and then the other ones as well. So you can see which one is not used the most. And that's going to be on the far right hand side as you scroll over. Now, how is this data point really going to benefit me, right? Is it's going to tell you when is somebody really going to leave? So how many people are leaving in the same kind of date band, right? So you know where you're going to have a smaller population within your formation, within your workspace. So you know, hey, I'm going to have limited availability during this period of time, right? So you can kind of run an assessment quickly just based upon clicking on column profile. We also have the count, we got the errors. So how many errors we really have within this? We have zero right now, right? So we fixed the data already. We have empty values, so that's counting my null. We have distinct, so we have 140 distinct. This is based upon the thousand rows that we're previewing, right? That's defaulted in Power BI. We have 54 unique values. So these are not repeated more than one time. So these dates are 
only listed one time. The minimum and maximum is really not going to apply too much when you're looking at dates. Like you'll get the range here, obviously, right? But it's more so going to help you when you're looking at values itself. And then average. Average is also really not going to help you too much, right? But average may come in handy. So let's just say, for example, I want to build a new custom column within this table, right? So I want to take the entire range between a begin date and the end date of an absence, right? And I want to identify, okay, what's the average amount of days across that entire column after I identify how long in person is really taking an absence for, for each row, right? Now I can identify quickly, okay, the average amount of days a person is going on in absence. And they can also do that on the front end as well. That's just another way, right? So if you're also going to be utilizing a column like that, it's just another quick data point before you start building your visualizations and kind of get a grasp of, you know, kind of where you're at. It's also going to help you identify anomalies when it comes to your data. So if you see something that's way off, you know, something just kind of a crazy astronomical number that should raise a red flag, right? Because now you know, okay, I probably need to investigate this more. I need to go look at my data source, kind of see what's wrong. You know, did I transform something incorrectly? And that's where you can just, you know, do a self-analysis, kind of self-check, pulse check real quick and just see where you're at and see if you just need to take some steps to kind of undo what you did previously or if there's a source data issue that you need to raise a red flag for. All right, so if I click on employee ID again, it's going to show me different column stats for numerical values, right? So I'll have a different minimum, maximum, I'll have a different average, standard deviation, even, and odd. So these are going to help you when you're looking at like sales, you're trying to see a total amount, you know, something that kind of stands out that's not right. You're looking at deviations, it's going to help you look at that range just automatically, right? So these are just generic stats that will just help you kind of identify, you know, did I import the data wrong? There's something else I can do. All right. And then the last two, I kind of call them the most boring two, to be quite honest, but um, we have monospaced. So that kind of just changes the format a little bit. So basically what that does is it displays everything in a monospaced font. And then we have show white space as well. So that shows you white space and new line characters. So for example, if I kind of shift over here a little bit and I click on show white space, if you're not necessarily in the front of a column, I unclick it and it's just going to kind of just jump it. Hey, so with that said, that's all I got for data previews. These are going to be hugely beneficial when it comes to transforming your data in Power Query. So I recommend recommend that you always utilize them to the fullest extent possible. Run that quick analysis. Look at those column stats, that value distribution. Look at those frequencies and kind of do a self-assessment of your data, you know, and see where does the problem really lie. Is it source data or is it something that you did maybe to transform it incorrectly so that you save time in the long run? Because when you visualize your data, you already did all your transformations. You already did all your connections via relationships. You know, it may become or some to kind of go backwards and track where that issue really lies. It does take time on the front end to do all these things, but it is definitely worth it. But with that said, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.